In the last tutorial, I spent some time talking about setting up RoboPort networks, how the bots work, and what the different types of chests do. During that, I mentioned that you can copy and paste chunks of your factory, and the bots will fly out to build it. These copied chunks are called blueprints, and there's a lot more to them than just being part of copy-paste. Let's take a closer look at them. Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio. Creating a blueprint is easy. Copy a chunk of your factory and place it in your inventory. Congratulations, you've made a blueprint. These can be selected later and placed wherever you want. However, if you hold down shift when you drag, you'll see a blue highlight on the selection and when you release, you'll get a lot more options for your blueprint. You can give it a name, choose the icons that will be displayed on the thumbnail, add a description to remind you later what on earth it's for, set it to snap to grid, which I'll come back to later because it's quite complicated, and you can choose what sort of information gets included with the filters. Entities means any normal building, assembly machines, pumps, rail, stations, etc. This is the default and what you'll get if you don't hold down shift when you copy. Tiles are any flooring that you've laid, such as stone bricks or concrete. In the Space Exploration mod, this includes space scaffolding. Copying train stop names means that when you drop the new blueprint in, the station won't have a random name, and so may already have trains configured to go to it. This can be very useful if you're setting up a new station that is to have identical settings, perhaps an additional mine, but can be dangerous if you copied an iron mine and are now trying to place a copper mine. Trains and train fuel allow you to make sure the bots place a fully programmed train and fuel it up so it's ready to depart. If you right click on anything in the blueprint, it will be greyed out. This has removed it from the blueprint, but until you save, you can undo by left clicking on the greyed out item. Getting rid of tiles under an entity is difficult though. At the bottom of the left pane, you can see a list of all the components in the blueprint. This is a useful reference if you're trying to get rid of almost all of the pylons or roboports from an area you've copied, especially as you can also right click on these to remove all instances of that component from the blueprint. Again, left clicking will place them all back again. Finally, at the top, the green arrow can be used to upgrade items in the blueprint. By default, this will upgrade everything that can be upgraded, belts, assembly machines and inserters, but you can use a pre-configured upgrade planner if you want. The arrow button allows you to export your blueprint as a text string. This can be saved outside Factorio in a text document, then sent to a friend, or whatever you want. There is a matching import string button on the toolbar, which can be used to import these strings back into Factorio as well, creating a new blueprint. Personally, I don't like importing other people's blueprints generally, but it can be a good way to learn. Hit the Create Blueprint button and you'll have a shiny new blueprint in your hand ready to use. As before, you can drop it into your inventory as a temporary place to keep it, and if you right click on it, you can edit it or delete it. To place a blueprint, simply take it in your hand and click somewhere in the world. The blueprint will be placed as ghosts and construction bots will fly out to place all the components, as I said earlier. If there's anything in the way of the blueprint, you won't be able to place it and you'll get an error message, but you can force it by holding shift. This will mark any bits of nature in the way, such as trees, rocks and cliffs, for deconstruction, and the bots will deal with these as well. If there's other bits of factory in the way, these won't be removed. The game will place all entities that can be placed, but won't overwrite anything that's already there. It's up to you to make sure that the area is tidy first. Note that entities will be reprogrammed. If you have an assembler set up to build yellow belts and you paste an assembler that's programmed to build red belts over the top of it, it will update the assembler's recipe. It won't replace or add modules or rotate belts or inserters, however. Now, let's take a look at snapping blueprints to a grid. This is the option I mentioned earlier when you copy and shift drag and it allows you to place down multiple blueprints and have them automatically align with each other. You can choose the size of the grid, which affects how often the blueprint will place, allowing you to space them out, and also where in the grid the blueprint is placed. Finally, you can choose whether the grid aligns with an absolute position, so offset a number of that grid size from the origin, or whether they are placed relative to the first one you placed. Traditionally, many people try to set this sort of grid to be chunk-aligned, 
that is, matched up with Factorio's internal 32x32 32 32 grid. This can be done by setting the grid size to 32x32 32 and then making sure that whatever you're built blueprinting is the right size to fit in that. Alternatively, you can turn on the Show Grid option and carefully build your design inside one of the squares. This system can be handy for placing down construction areas like green circuit arrays, but really comes into its own for rail systems, especially if you want to build a city block design. Create a blueprint for each chunk of rail you want to use. Straights and junctions are the most important, but you can make corners as well if you want. And then open each blueprint and turn on Snap to Grid, making sure the size is set to 32x32 32 32 and your design is centred so that the rails will meet up between chunks. Once you've created these blueprints, it's trivial to stamp down large areas of rail. You can drag the straights and then drop in the junctions or corners very quickly. If you include roboports and power in your blueprints, you could make the whole thing self-building. Alternatively, if you like mods, you could try File, as shown in this video. Tangentially related to blueprints are deconstruction planners and upgrade planners, which I'm trying to resist calling red prints and green prints respectively. These can be accessed from their buttons on your toolbar, or with the keyboard shortcuts which by default are Alt-D and Alt-U respectively. At their simplest, you can drag them across the world and mark any entity under them for deconstruction or for an appropriate upgrade, and as ever your dedicated and hardworking bots will fly out to make your wishes come true. The powerful part of these planners, however, is that they can be customised. Drop a deconstruction planner into your hotbar and right click on it. From here, you can choose to whitelist, that is just deconstruct the items you specify, or blacklist, so deconstruct everything except the items specified. Item filters can be set as before by clicking on the squares or by bringing items over from your inventory. There are two tabs here, floor tiles must be done in the second tab. Note that if the deconstruction planner matches both entities and tiles in an area, it will just select the entities. The entities picker has a few options which you won't be used to. You can specify environment items, such as fish, cliffs, or specific tree or rock types, and you can also select miscellaneous, which includes things like ghosts and items on the ground. Uh, pay no attention to the final tab here, this is there because I have cheats running in order to make making videos easier. <clears throat> The Upgrade Planner can be configured in a similar way. Right click on it and it opens a new window. In here, you can choose what items will be upgraded, from what to what. When you select the first item, you'll see all items the Upgrade Planner can work on, but after you pick one and click on the other side of the conversion, you'll only see compatible upgrades. No, you can't upgrade a belt into a chest. But you can use the Upgrade Planner to downgrade as well, if you want. Currently, all your red, green and blue prints are just sitting there in your hotbar or inventory, taking up valuable space that could be used for iron plates. Fortunately, there's somewhere else we can stick them. Press B to open the Blueprint Manager. Any of your blueprints or planners can be dropped in here, and when you put one in the final row, a new row will be created, so you won't ever run out of space. Using blueprints from here is as easy as clicking on them and then using them as normal in the world. When you're finished with it, press Q to dismiss it, don't put it in your inventory or hotbar as that will take it out of the Blueprint Manager. You'll see that there are two tabs at the top of the window. These allow you to have personal blueprints which only you can see but will appear in every game you play, and shared ones that will be visible to anyone in the current game. This is great for when you have a standard station design, you can save it into the game blueprints and everyone else on, in your game will be able to use it. This system works well, at least until you have too many blueprints and the interface becomes overfull and cluttered. Fortunately, there's a system for creating books of blueprints, which are essentially folders that you can then sort your blueprints into. Click the blueprint book on the toolbar to create a new book. If, like me, you've hidden that button because you don't use it very much, you can use the three dots to show all available controls and still use the buttons from in here. Drop this book into your blueprints manager as normal, and then right click to open it. From here, you can give it a title so you can find it again easily in the future, as well as icons to make sure you rec recognise it. Now you can drop blueprints into it just as before. You can even add additional books inside books to give you a tree structure. If you need to remove the blueprints from your hotbar, middle click on them. 
If you open them up and delete them, it will delete them from the blueprints book as well. And with that, we've come to the end of the tutorial. You now know everything there is to know about blueprints and the bots which will build them for you. I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'd also be interested to hear any other ideas you have for more areas that need some explanation. Don't forget to subscribe so you see the next tutorial, and come along to join the streams to see these sort of designs being made live. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.